Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I give thanks to you for blessing us with uh, all the time and the resources that you give us each day to share your love and share your, your gifts with others. Help us each day to be pre prepared and willing servants to share your love and peace, to be those who reflect your love to the world. Lord, as we come to you now, may you bless our time together. May you, sh may you fill us with your word and with your hope, with the joy of your being your children. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Text for our message will be from Matthew chapter 6 today, so hopefully you keep that handy. Uh, I won't uh, be com uh, there the whole time, but I do want to point that out that we're going to spend some time there. Uh, you know, as we were thinking about worrying, as we think about the time that is before us, I'm reminded of uh, a New Year's Eve about 13 years ago, 1999. And keep in mind, I don't remember most New Year's Eve, but perhaps many of you remember New Year's Eve 1999 for the same reason I do. If you remember, everybody was talking about the, how the millennium was going to be, the world was going to come to a halt, that everything was going to grind to a stop, all the computers were going to stop working, the banks would shut down, and there would be chaos. Did anybody, any of that happen? I remember waking up on uh, 2000, uh, January 1st, 2000, and everything was normal. Here we are in 2013, and everything is normal. Last year, there were a bunch of people who were pretty concerned because there was this calendar that, uh, that was uh, put out by the Mayans, and, it was, and they said December 21st, 2012. Well, I still had to preach December 25th, 2012, so I know the end of the world didn't come. See, there's a lot of people who predict, who make plans, who worry about the future. And for what? Honestly, can we truly predict what the future will bring? Can we truly plan for every single day? Well, no, the answer is no to that. However, we do try, don't we? We try to worry about it. We try to put these things into ways that we can handle them. We think about each day, and we think about things that are even outside of our control, and we try to say, how can I deal with this? How many of you have lain awake at night worrying about your children, your grandchildren? At 3 o'clock in the morning, is there anything you can do? How many of you have ground your teeth to almost bare, worrying about what other people think about you? How many of you have worried about the, pulled your hair out, hopefully not literally, about a doctor's appointment? The truth is there's so many things we worry about in this world. There's so many things that we fear. And we don't need to. We don't need to. Because God is in control of those things. And worry, the way to counteract worry is trust. Now Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, there's Matthew chapter 6, the very last verse, I want to point you to it again, is, therefore do not worry about, the, about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and how true that is. There's enough going on each day for us, whether, whether people of God or not, for us to not worry about what the next day will bring. Now, it's easy, though, to get caught up in that worry, isn't it? It's easy to get caught up in those things that are ahead. But there's a difference for us between worrying and planning. And sometimes I think we as Christians fail to see that. We get caught up in these worrying things that we can't control, things where our faith should not be, instead of putting our faith completely in God. Now, I think about as we worry, as we th worry about these things, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't plan, though. We shouldn't worry, because that's a sin. It's not trust in God, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't plan. And what I want to talk about here today is, is, is that idea of planning. Is that idea of looking at the future and looking at it as a gift from God. Looking at what tomorrow may bring and not just going at, into it blindly. So often we talk about having blind faith. The blind faith is good when it comes to faith in our Savior, faith in what God has planned for our salvation, but blind faith that tomorrow is going to take care of itself and that we needn't plan for the future. Well, that's just as much a sin against God as worrying. God has given us gifts. He's given us abilities. He's given us time. He's given us resources. And He, pl and he expects us to be faithful with those. In the Missouri Synod, our church body about... Oh, since the foundation till about a hundred years ago, give or take, there was this fear that, well, we wouldn't be fully trusting God if we bought life insurance or if we joined a farm co-op. And so in our synod, in our church body, it was forbidden. 
I talked to one of uh, the guys I've worked for. His father had joined a farm co-op because he was a farmer. He got excommunicated from his congregation until he refused to quit that co-op. Now the Missouri Synod has since come around to realize there's a difference between prudent trust in God and sinful worry. Prudent trust in God means planning for the future, for your family, using the resources wisely. Fearful worry is worrying about what tomorrow will be, bring, worrying about what is out of your control. Prudent trust of God will be you to, recognizing your vocation as a father or a mother or a grandmother or a grandfather, preparing for your children's future, your grandchildren's future. Worry is worrying about that last day, worrying about death, worrying about what might not be. It's important we look at this because it affects the way that we value our lives, the way that we live our lives. When we do not plan, we are sinning against God. And one of the ways that even we as Christians, good, well-meaning Christians, fail to plan is in our money, is in our resources, what God has given us. Maybe not so long ago, you used to be able to go through a person's checkbook and you would see a check register. Some of you remember this. Anymore, children really don't even know how to balance a checkbook. Now, I'm not saying that balancing a checkbook is the end all. But one of the things balancing a checkbook does is it reveals that you are planning your money, planning how to use the resources God has given you. And even if you don't balance a checkbook, it is important that we budget God's money because when we do not budget God's money, notice I said God's money, not our money, God's money, we are not being faithful stewards. We are not living up to what he has prepared for us. When we are not faithful stewards of God's money, how quickly it disappears, how quickly it flows through our fingers. I love how Solomon puts it in Proverbs chapter 23. You might work, mark this verse, but uh, really you can go through much of Proverbs and he talks about proper stewardship, but this is verse, chapter 23, 4 and 5. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they're gone for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Maybe some of you know exactly what Solomon's talking about there. When you don't play on your money, all you have to do is barely look at it and it's gone. Well, I can spend a little here for a fast food there, and I can spend a little here for that new electronic device here, and I can spend this and that, and all of a sudden it's gone. And how fast does that happen with our finances when we are not faithful stewards of what God has given us? And why is this significant? Because it is God's gifts to us. Every penny we have, every gift we have, the clothing we wear, the food that we eat, those are gifts to God that we are to be wise stewards of. And when we're not wise stewards of God's gifts, again, it is sin against God. Because when we're not wise stewards, we fail to completely trust in God. When we're not wise stewards, we question God. We struggle to look at what God has given us and be content with it. Instead, much like Solomon was talking about there, we need to get more and more. We want more and more. And even the more and more we have is not enough. And so then, as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When we're not wise stewards of the gifts God has given us, our hearts are led after that money, those resources, instead of led to trust Him. When we budget our money, though, it's a beautiful thing, honestly. Because when we budget our money, when we plan how we're going to use what God has given us, we have a way of being able to be generous with his gifts, to give what he has given us to others, to share with others, to support others, to care for others. When he has given us those gifts, we are able to be, even more importantly, content. I can't tell you the exact numbers, but so many marriages struggle. They have arguments. They have fights because of money, mismanagement of funds. See, money is not just a small thing that we can say, well, it doesn't matter. But the way we use what God has given us does matter. You know, another place, it's not just finances, but even we as Christian people, sometimes it's time as well, isn't it? Sometimes the way that we let time slip through our fingers that we forget that time, that there's, we know that there's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, but we forget there's only so much time. And when we don't plan our time, when we don't plan how we're going to use our time, 
How often do we become too busy for what is important? You know, I know I'm guilty of this as well. But how many of you, when someone asks you how you are doing, what is your answer? Busy. So many people will say busy. Or fine is the other one. But, but it seems like so many people will say busy. Busy, busy, busy. We're busy with everything. I've got to be here. I've got to be there. I've got to be everywhere. And we do not prioritize what is most important. We do not prioritize what is most significant in our lives. Instead, our lives are busy with things that are not important. How many of us say, I am too busy to pray. I am too busy to, sp- to be in worship. I am too busy to spend time in prayer. I'm too busy for my family. We might not outright say those things. But how many of our lives reveal those things? There are so many things we cram our schedules full of. Things that aren't important. Things that you know, honestly can wait till tomorrow. But because of our sinful worry, because of our failure to plan our time, to be wise stewards of what God has given us, that which is most important seems to take a back seat. How often does your spouse take a back seat to the internet? How often do your children take a back seat to your time to relax in front of the TV? How often does your family, does, your, does God take a back seat to work, to getting the job done? Too often these things take the place of what is most important, what should be most important. You know, if you don't take care of your wife or your husband, Someone will. If you don't take care of your children and raise your children, someone will. But God has given you that blessing, that opportunity to care for your wife, your husband. God has given you that blessing, that opportunity to care for your children. And I think if we took that responsibility seriously, if we honored our homes as we should and gave as much time to our work as we, as we gave to, if we gave as much time to our families as we did to our work, that we would not be in the moral state that we are in today. Yes, it is hard words to hear, but we are called as Christian parents, we are called as Christian people to care for our families and to put them right after God. It doesn't go God, work, family. It doesn't go God, my relaxation, family. It goes God, then family. That is what we mean when we say we submit to one another. That is what we mean when we say in a Christian marriage, it's not just about the feelings that you have fluttering in your heart, but honestly, it is about the way that you care for one another and the way that you care for your children. And when we don't give our time as we should, our families suffer, and even more importantly, our faith life suffer. Because honestly, that's where our, what suffers in our, when we don't budget our time. When we don't take our time. I want you to think about that for a minute. How often have you answered busy? How often have you failed to budget your time for your family? It's easy to do. And I don't mean just filling our time with sinful things, but the lack of managing our time the lack of planning. Everything that is important gets shuffled back. But think about this. You know that each day has 24 hours and each week has seven days. You, God has already told you from the beginning it hasn't changed. And so how you are going to use that time, whether to honor God, to honor yourself, to honor the world, God leaves that in your hands. You know, there's one other place, and this is a little bit uncomfortable for me to talk about, but there's one other place where even we as Christians sometimes are poor stewards that we don't plan so well. And that's in the way that we care for our bodies. I am standing before you as a sinner who does not always do a good job of caring for his body who at times puts food that is not good for him into his body, who at times does not get the amount of sleep he needs, who at times, more often than not, does not exercise as he needs. God has given us these bodies to be wise stewards of. Now, if we don't plan to take care of these bodies, we are not planning to take care 
of the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not planning to take care of that which God has given us. And whether or not we want to think about it, that is a sin against God as well. Because the gift of our health and the gift of our bodies is a gift from God as well. And any time we abuse God's gifts, we are sinning against Him. Sometimes I, I will make an excuse. I worry and I, and I eat my worry and I eat my stress. But that is not healthy. That is not holy. What is holy is turning over our worry, our stress, our sin to God. What is holy is remembering that God is in control of it all. It's remembering that these bodies, these lives that we have been given on this earth, we have been given to serve and honor the Lord. We have been given this life and these, the time that we have, the resources we have, to share our faith, to share God's love with others. But so often it's easy to, to, to say that, well, I'm worried, or, I'm not, or even when we're not worried, to not plan. And when we don't plan, well, we plan to fail, don't we? I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it's so true. Because when we don't plan how we're going to use our resources, our time, our health, we plan to fail, fail and, abu and abuse what God has given us. Now this side of eternity, none of these things will be a cure-all for your life, will, will be a cure-all for your future. Because like I said in the beginning, we can't plan for the future. We can't know what each day does. Let me take that. We can't know what each day does, but that doesn't mean we can't plan. Plan to be God's people here on this earth. Plan to share His message. Plan to share His love. Plan to share what He has done for us. See, even as much as we fail to prioritize God, even as much as worry seems to rule in our lives, even as much as we fail to do what we should do as people of God, God always puts us first. He always has time for you. He's always ready to give you everything. Now, if you know any financial advisors, they'll tell you you need to diversify. But God doesn't follow the financial advice of this world. Instead, he has given us everything. Not, as P First Peter said, in gold and silver, but in the very precious suffering death of his son. When Jesus gave his life on the cross, he gave you everything. He gave you the entire inheritance of the kingdom. Galatians chapter 4 says, we are not waiting for our inheritance, but we right now live as people with an inheritance. We have already been given everything. We have been given everything from our God and He gives us the blessing of each day to be wise stewards of those gifts, to be wise stewards of sharing that gift with others, to be wise stewards of sharing God's love. To not worry, but to trust in Him. I'd just like to close with one final verse here that probably so many of you know, but it's, it's so worth reading again because it reminds us of who's in control. And we know then in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of the Son, that, he might be, that, we, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. We, people of God, have a place even now we have our inheritance may we richly and joyfully share that inheritance being wise stewards of that which god has given us amen please pray with me lord jesus i give thanks to you for the many gifts you have given us in our lives the gifts of our lives and uh, lives and our health each day health each day i pray lord that we would wisely use that which you have given us forgive us for those times when we fail to trust in you and we fail to trust you fully and we worry forgive us for those times when we forget that you are in control forgive us for those times when we fail to plan to use that which you have given us to honor you reassure us that our sins are forgiven that our sins are forgiven by the precious suffering and death by your death on the cross not with gold or silver but with your very precious body and blood. May we remember that now and each day, 
that as we go forth, that we are stewards of that which you have given us. In all things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.